All right, we're going to start the continuation of 7.2 by recalling what we did with a quadratic equation, how we solved for it. So we equate everything to zero, we factor it, and then we take each factor and solve for the zeros of your equation. So we got x is equal to one-fifth and x is equal to negative one. Okay, so let's look at this example here. It's uh, given as five cosine squared x equal to one minus four cosine x. Um, over this domain here. So take notice that our domain is in radian. So all this algebra that we have to do, just look for it there. There's an explanation on the side here. We want to create kind of like uh, an imitation of a quadratic equation, and we're able to factor it losing like this. So if you can't sense what it looks like here, so think about it as 5a squared plus 4a minus 1, where you're thinking about a as cosine x. So this becomes... 5a squared plus 4a minus 1. If we factor it, it would look like this, which when we go back to change a as cosine x, we would say 5 cosine x minus 1 is equal to 0, and we solve for x here. And our other solution would be cosine x plus 1 is equal to 0, which represents a plus 1 there. So we actually have two sets of solution for this equation here and for this equation here, for this expression and this expression, because it's quadratic. You will have two separate expressions. So now when we solve for it, your reference angle is 1.37. Take note that it's in radian mode. And take note the cosine here is 1 over 5. It's positive, so it will be in the first and fourth quadrants. So now we're looking for solutions in the domain 0 to 2 pi. So that's from here all the way to 360 degrees. So theta r, this one here is 1.37. We know that. And that would be 1.37 here. So your um, x1 would be, this is your x1. Then your other, this is your x2. Okay, so when we look for those values, x1 would just be simply 1.37, and x2 would be just um, 2 pi minus 1.37, which is 4. So 2 pi minus 1.37, that's equal to 4.91. So these are the two um, solutions for this uh, expression here. Now we have to find for the other expression that we had when we were trying to factor it. So I'm going to put this on the side here. It's going to be on the other side. The other one would be cosine x plus 1 is equal to 0. So if we just... So if we continue solving for a possible value of x here, we will have isolate your, neg uh, your 1 here. It will be negative 1. Cosine x is equal to negative 1, so x would be equal to, I calibrate it to be in degree mode first, it's 180 degrees, and I know that's pi. Um, I need to put that in radian mode because my domain is in radian mode. So that's x possible value of x, so I call this um, x sub 3. This is x sub 1, x sub 2, and x sub 3, that would be pi. So your solutions, possible solutions for your x given your equation would be 1.37. These are all angle measures in radian, 4.91 and pi, which is 3.14. Write or write pi because that's your exact value there. Uh, your solutions can also be validated or verified using a graphical um, a graphing calculator. So you put on y1 the left side of your equation and you put on y2 the right side of your equation and you just want to make sure that your domain is from 0 to 2 pi because that's the domain that's given. And the scale there, you can just change it so it will be wider when you look at it. The max and min, you can put it in those numbers. So you see within this a domain here, your graphs intersect at 1, 2, 3 three points. So this is your first solution, which is 1.3. This should be the pi, which is 3.14, and this should be the 4.91 um, that we got a while ago. So that's those are just the solutions within the domain 0 to 2 pi. 
Now let's look into the next example here. Solve the equation for sine squared x is equal to 3 over the domain negative 360 all the way to 0. Okay, for this one, we have 4 sine squared x is equal to 3. So we divide both sides by 4 first. We get this expression here. And since it's a square, so we think of it as x squared is equal to 3 over 4. We take the square root of both sides. So sine squared x would just be sine x. This would be the square root of uh, 3 over 4. But take note, we have plus and minus sign here. So plus and minus square root of 3 over 4. And then we can simplify it further as saying plus and minus square root of 3 over 2. So we square rooted both sides. So now we have two possible solutions where we have sine x is equal to the positive root 3 over 2. And the other one would be sine x, which is negative root 3 over 2. So this part here, if it's positive, sine is positive at quadrants 1 and 2. Sine is negative at quadrants 3 and 4. So we actually pretty much... Um, find the values, possible values of x at any of this um, diagrams here. So we know that the solving for x here, we get a reference angle to be 60. So since our domain is from negative 360 to 0, so we're rotating this way, it's negative um, angle. So our first uh, possible angle is x1 here. So this one here, x1, that's just negative 60 x2 would be this angle here. It's going to be negative 120. This angle here is negative 240. And this angle here would be negative 300. So I'm going to write this all down. So I've written down all your solutions here, or possible values of x. So how do you check if that's right? So you can plug in each of those to your equation and see if it satisfies it. Or you can do it graphically as well. I'm going, to down, I'm going to be down to your last example here. Okay, so think about uh, forming this into a quadratic equation. So it will be 4 tangent squared x minus 2 tangent x minus 1 equal to 0. So we can think about this as 4a squared minus 2a minus 1, where a, I'm thinking, is equal to tangent x. This one is not factorable, so we need to use your quadratic formula where, where your a here which is what we're looking for uh, usually you're used to x squared but a is equal to the negative b all this quadratic formula so if i replace a b and c in this quadratic formula you will end up with a is equal to 2 plus and minus root 20 over 8. now this can be simplified further but we'll just keep it that way because we're going to evaluate it anyways where a going back a is equal to tangent x so remember we kept this as, as a squared, as, as tangent squared x, where it's a is equal to tangent x. So then when we try to solve this using a quadratic formula, it will look like this, where a again is tangent x. So going back to our equation, tangent a or tangent x, which is your a value a while ago, is equal to 2 plus and minus root 20 over 8. And we can have two possible roots to this equation here. The first one would be tangent x is equal to this. So you can have x will be equal to tangent to the negative one of whatever's the value there. And the other one would be the same. Okay. So when we look for the angle here, when we're going to look for your x value here, we will find that it's equal to, so your reference angle is 0 0.68. Now from here, we know that tangent will be positive here, so it will be found at quadrants, quadrants 1 and quadrant 3. So it's over here and here, and your reference angle would be 0 0.68, and the other one would be also 0 0.68. We're looking for the angle within the domain negative pi to positive pi. So this would be your x1, and this would be your x2. So x1 would just be 0 0.68, and x2 would just be um, pi minus 0 0.68, but it's negative. And that would be... Um, 
negative pi plus 0 0.68, which is equal to negative 2.46. So for the next possible solution, we will have tangent x is equal to this expression here. We know this is a negative value, so we will find your equations, of, uh, your possible values of x at quadrants 2 and 4. So here I'm going to write quadrants 2 and quadrants 4 for this one here. Um, so when we find the reference angle, the reference angle would just be, this is a negative, so we can drop the negative there. That's why I put an absolute value here. Tangent to the negative 1 of this one. So you evaluate this first and make it positive, and then we, we write it down as tangent to the negative 1 of this value here. Your reference angle will give you 30, 0 0.30. So this is the reference angle here, 0 0.3. That's also 0 0.3. So now to find your, um, your angles or your x values within the domain. So this would be, this would be theta 1 or x1. And then this would be x2. Because our domain is pi and negative pi. So for this one, your solutions would be x1 is... Um, all right, so your solutions would be for this one, for x1, it will be pi minus 0 0.3 minus this one here. That would be 2.84. And the other one would just be x2 here, which is negative 0.3. This is the negative angle. So your specific solutions within the domain are this, 0 0.68, this, uh, this value here, and this value here. So now we can create two general solutions for each of those solutions. I'm going to write it down for you. So general solutions would be, we can just consider this angle here, 0 0.68, and you're going to have another repeated solution after pi. So your period for a tangent function would be pi k. So 0 0.68 plus pi plus another pi, plus another pi, so it's pi k where k is all integers there. So the first solution would be for this, uh, for the other side would be, this one is 2.84 plus pi, uh, plus another pi, plus another pi. Okay, we can go on and on. Your period here would be pi for tangent, and k there can be any integer, positive or negative. So that's everything on your solving equations algebraically that's lots of little details to it um hopefully we can do some more practice uh, in class all right that's it